1885, Kings County started to build a hospital for mentally disturbed citizens. They called it Kings County Lunatic Asylum. When the farm colony asylum started to become overcrowded, the state took over in 1895 and renamed it Kings Park State Hospital. The hospital became the focal point of Kings Park since the patients worked as a form of therapy. The hospital had livestock, crops, water reservoirs, laundromats, shoe shops, power plants, railroad spurs, a rec center, police and fire department, cemetery, water tower, and on top of that, over 150 buildings for patients' needs. In 1954, Kings Park patient population exceeded 9,300 people. The hospital started to use electroshock therapy and operations such as lobotomies to relieve the need for patients to constantly be taken care of. These dehumanizing techniques went on until the drug Thorazine came out in 1955. After Thorazine, the hospital's population quickly decreased throughout the years until the doors were shut in 1996 and the remaining patients were released or sent to Pilgrim State Hospital. Building 7 is one of the newer buildings in Kings Park. Built in 1966 to house patients and administrative offices, the building also contained a new morgue to take over Building 82's old one. Building 7's morgue had six slab freezers on each side with an autopsy room. The building is 13 stories tall and just feet short of Building 93's record height on Long Island. Because this building is so new, it still has power running to the antennas at the cube which was built to hold two very large water towers. I'm gonna go on the other side and get the uh, surgery room. Uh, the Buckman Hall was named after uh, Buckman. Uh, he was a former director of the psychiatric center, and uh, and that was a recreation hall. They have bowling alleys and swimming pools, nice. and we were very disappointed because when they closed the center, we wanted to have that for the town. But because that it requires it to be staffed constantly, it's very expensive to staff it. It just uh, uh, we weren't willing to take it over at that time. And so now when we go over there, many of the doors are open. We cannot go inside the buildings, but you could look inside the door and you could see uh, the architecture. You could see the current state of decay. And uh, it's a shame because a lot of times these buildings, if we would have taken action right away to use them, for an alternative use, it would have been a lot cheaper and a lot more practical. Once you let the weather come in and start to rain and the coldness and warmness, it uh, causes warping and things to chip, uh, so it makes it very difficult.
Building 7 also connects to buildings 21 and 22, which served as geriatric, drug treatment, more admissions offices. 21 and 22 were built in 1957 and were initially meant for continued care. All three buildings have fallout shelters in case of an attack. Seven still has a security system and police are allowed to enter the building because it is so structurally sound. But for a period of time, before this building was built, there was no morgue and so all the people who died were brought over to Pilgrim. The only thing is, is if you died over the weekend, uh, there was no transportation, so they would take the people and put them in the cooler where they would store the food down at the storehouse at Building 44. They have a little corner of the building, and so you'd have to wait till Monday morning, and the and the paddy wagon will come by and bring you over there. So uh, hopefully they didn't do that too long. And this story just in from the wires of the Associated Press. The incidence of mental illness in the United States appears to be on the increase. He's losing his mind. Strapped to the bed, the semi-conscious acting dead. Spit on the head, nurse, and got brushed like I smacked the fed. Holding me down while the nurse brought me drugs. Took out the needle like rock radar and shot me up like boy along. Cause I'm beyond how ball, the power walking. Standing around. 1933, three buildings were built into a complex called Group 4, as we call it today, the Quads. The quads are made up of three separate buildings attached by Building 42, and each stood four stories high. Buildings 41 and 43 connect to make what looks to be a four-building apartment complex from an aerial shot. Along with its two courtyards, it was made this way to allow the most light into each ward of Group 4. My greatest satisfaction working in Kings Park, I would say, is that I felt, even to this day, it was my favorite job because I felt I could make a difference in someone's life in the sense that, uh, again, a small act of kindness. Uh, I felt like me being there, the psychiatric center was a better place because I cared about people and, uh, and I, felt, uh, I felt a deep connection with all the people there. Uh, uh, my mother had worked at, uh, with uh, developmentally disabled uh, children and so I was always exposed to that and she impressed that upon me. Uh, you have the ability to change you may not have the ability to change the world, but you can make your part a lot better. And that's the perspective I took. Building 42 had a kitchen and dining hall for the geriatric patients of 41 and 43, and smoke could be seen rising from the cupola on top of 42. The cupola on top frequently caught fire from all the grease, but fortunately it never burned down. I saw, and I saw only the patients that were well managed enough to go out. But I would say in my history of living here in Kings Park, when I was a kid, you would hear the screams so loud from the windows. But as I got older, that tended to be muted a little bit more as the more effective psychotropic drugs came into effect. In fact, Group 4, which is just to our right over here, is... Uh, is during the 50s, that was where they first started the Thorazine experiments. And it was definitely a dividing line. It was before Thorazine and after Thorazine. The whole uh, manner of the psychiatric center changed. And so if there was one drug I would point to that was uh, really made the change, it would have to be the, the Thorazine. Oh, yeah. Oh, you 
son of a bitch. Yes. Building 23, also known as the Rec Center, was built in 1970 to allow patients time to relax and have fun. The center came equipped with a pool, library, movie room, bowling alley, gymnasium, bingo room, and a stage. This gave the patients freedom to play games and enjoy themselves. Today, Building 23 has ample damage to both the interior and exterior of the core structure. Due to delay and hesitancy and all that, uh, time has rendered all these buildings, uh, they're beyond use, they can't use them. Now, I know a year or two after they closed in 1996, Ken Marion, who was the public information officer, uh, told me that there's only four buildings that can be salvaged after closing, after a year or two of closing, which was uh, Building 23, Buckman Center, Building 7. Building 21 and 22. But they hesitated for so many years that these buildings are going to here. Uh, when they shut the heat off, the walls crumble, everything. Pipes rust, rot. So uh, my feeling is being the state has no money. These buildings are going to sit here for a long, long time. And I like it because uh, uh, I connect it with my memories of the past. So the longer they stand, the happier I am, even though they really have no use other than... Uh, Nostalgia and sentiment. The damage already done to this building is irreversible, even though the building is still relatively new. When Kings Park closed down, the rec center was offered to Kings Park High School for close to nothing, but was declined due to the cost of staffing and renovations. So, a great legacy of this place. A lot of people have come and gone, a lot of people have died. And so I'll sit and stare, transfixed in these buildings, thinking of all the hundreds and thousands of people that have come and gone through these buildings, lived and died, worked, and so on. Uh, very interesting legacy, emotional legacy. Over 100 years running, Kings Park needed various power plants to fuel this operation. In 1892, Building 59 was built as the first plant. It later was made into a medical record storage building, when Building 5 was erected in 1939 as a second power plant. Later turned into a lock shop in 1968, Building 29 was created just feet away with a brand new coal stack. Coal trains ran right next to the building, and you can still see the pillars the train stood on. The plant was later modified to burn oil and natural gases, so the railroad spur was taken down. And uh, the inside of the smokestack is lined with these bricks. Once, once it's hot, then it cools off. If it isn't maintained, all the, the inner lining begins to crack and fall down. And that's what all these, all these bricks have done. It's all filling up and uh, it's piling up inside the tower. Uh, a while back we made a video about this. We want to bring attention to, uh, to the problem and so now what the state does is they come by every six months and inspect it. They say it's structurally sound. Uh, I believe them, but uh, we, we sleep well knowing it's being, now being inspected on a regular basis. Germinator. Building 15, also known as Wisteria, was built in 1939 and has been known to hold the more violent patients. Sadly, there is no factual evidence that Wisteria was meant to hold aggressive patients, but after visiting the building, the rumors seem to be true. Many rooms in Wisteria have signs next to them which say, keep door locked at all times. And when you enter the room, it almost feels like a jail cell. This is also one of the buildings we were able to find remnants of drugs. One nurse's office had a cabinet labeled, Medication for Treatments. Wisteria is also the hardest building in Kings Park to actually get into, since the only entrance is through an underground tunnel.
Building 80, also known as Your Call, was built in 1932 to allow patients the chance to either watch movies or create and reenact plays. York was built like a smaller version of Glenwood Landing's theater, except there were no seats on the floor, only the balcony. York's theater was built with a skylight above the stage, which is now used by pigeons as an entrance. The floor is covered with their droppings, and the noxious fumes are almost unbearable. We have some old pictures of York Hall, and what it is, is it, it's a, uh, an all-purpose theatrical center. They had basketball games, they held graduations here. Uh, when I was a kid, we picked up our, our KPY equipment in here. It's beautiful. They have these, uh, uh, at one time they had beautiful chandeliers. This is one of the first buildings that we're working on with the Nessaquag River State Park Foundation to rehabilitate and use this again as a community center to put on plays. And we have a women's theater group who's interested in this, uh, the Armand Theater. And what they, uh, what they do is they put on plays uh, that are of social significance to ladies. And so uh, we like this because you only have to staff it when you're having events. And the events pay for the staff because whenever deciding what you're going to do with the buildings, you have to have a way to pay for it. So we're currently working through the red tape right now uh, to try to work it out. But the, our website is OurStatePark.com. You stop by and visit it, and uh, it's good to be involved because uh, it would be a shame if they tore down a building like this. So. Uh, In 1939, Walter Freeman created transorbital lobotomy. Lobotomy was done initially using an ice pick, but later the leukotome, then orbitoclast, was created for the operations. Lobotomy was done by electroshocking the patient's unconscious, then inserting the leukotome into the back of the patient's eye sockets and blindly moving the instrument to destroy nerves in the frontal lobe. Lobotomy was done to keep violent schizophrenics calmer and was even done to children with cases of ADHD. Sadly, lobotomies left most in an emotionless state of life where patients would sit and stare for hours and were mostly inaudible. Freeman performed over 3,500 lobotomies in over 23 states until an antipsychotic drug by the name of Thorazine took over in the 1950s. Freeman's license was revoked shortly after when a patient died during a lobotomy. In 1939, Building 93 was built to alleviate the problem of overcrowding at Kings Park. 93 is one of the largest Long Island asylums and stands 12 stories tall. The building was made like the quads to allow the most sunlight possible into each part of the building. 93 was used for geriatric infirmary and drug treatment, and the building was made in a very unique way. Since Kings Park was so overcrowded at the time, developers decided to build upwards instead of out. Uh, when we were growing up, we used to call it Dracula's Castle or the Devil's Throne. This was built in uh, 1939, I believe. And uh, you see how it's stepped going up? It's like a, uh, a stepping action. What that is, is that there are day rooms in the front of the building. And the patients on the very top of the building were the least functional patients. They couldn't go out by themselves, so they didn't require a large day room. And so they put them on the top floor. Uh, the second tier is for higher functioning patients. They required more of a day room. And finally on the bottom, it uh, stepped down one more step. And those were patients who were allowed to roam around the grounds and required a little bigger day room. The building was made with day room steps that came down the side of the building. 
This allowed staff to keep the more bedridden patients at the top since they had no need to exercise. The lower levels were made for the physically able patients who could walk and needed more day room space to move around. When Kings Park began its release of patients starting in the 1970s, the upper floors began to close and followed its way down until the building's doors were closed for good in 1996. Because Building 93 is so large, it is the biggest attraction to urban explorers and has become the most vandalized building on the property. In 2001, a fence was built around the building to keep out unwanted vandals. There are many holes in the fence that local police try to board up, but every few nights, a new hole is made. Your head and neck and scalp it. Ripple for your flesh and make an outfit. Yeah. 